Hello everyone, my name is Shen Li. Today I am talking about trajectory optimization for ropes through contact. Let's consider a knot tying task. We have a rope in our hand. To do knot tying, we usually have to prepare this rope. For example, we will place this rope on the floor, on the table, hang it on the wall, or using both hands to hold it. My project is about enabling robot to do this rope preparation process. Let's say this, this is a rope on the left with um, five links, and uh, we want to prepare this rope for robot knot tying. For example, we can place this rope on a table. There are two objectives here. The first objective is to maximize the horizontal span, which means that we want to straighten the rope as much as possible, which will give us the maximized flexibility for future knot tying. The second objective is a stable rope configuration. We place this rope on the table so that the rope can be stable. We don't need to use our hand to hold the rope. We can use our hand to do future knot tying tasks and dexterous manipulation tasks. We want to use trajectory optimization to achieve this goal. However, the challenge here is contact. As we notice, any point along the rope can make contact with any point on the table at any given time, which makes it very hard for trajectory optimization. Therefore, we are using the contact implicit trajectory optimiz optimization formulation. Our formulation is similar to the original work. I want to highlight several things here. First, the objective functional. What does this mean? So the uppercase D span is the total length of the rope. The lowercase d span is the distance between the two ends of the rope, given any rope configuration. Therefore, minimizing the difference between the two terms means that we want to straighten the rope as much as possible. This corresponds to our first objective, maximize the horizontal span. Another thing I want to highlight here is constraint 5. What does this constraint mean? We have a two specified time step. One is k1, intermediate time step. One is uppercase k, final time step. We spe uh, so from k1 to k is actually a specified time range in the second half of the trajectory. And during that range, we want the q dot k to be zero, which means that we want the velocity of the rope to be zero. This corresponds to our second objective, stable rope configuration. We don't want the rope to move. As we have seen here, there is no constraints about placing the rope onto the table. We only specify the two objectives, maximize the horizontal span and the stable rope configuration. We want the optimization solver to figure out that the best way to accomplish this task is to actually place the rope on the table by leveraging contact, not avoiding contact. This is a solution found by the optimization solver. As we can see, the solver actually found a trajectory where the, cape, where the rope is making contact with the table, even though we didn't specify that in our optimization program. There are several challenges when I was working on this project. Numerical difficulty. We actually employed a continuation and relaxation process to sequentially solve the optimization program. And at every iteration, we have to tune the parameters, which is very effortful. Future direction include automating this process by developing some systematic method. I also noticed that my optimization program has been very sensitive to model parameters. If I change the damping, sometimes Snopt would no longer be able to find feasible solutions. Conditioning number has been very high in Snopt. Sometimes it can reach 10 to the power of 10. I also implemented LGL quadrature collocation in Python with Drake. However, I could not make Snopt to find feasible solutions for rope models with four or more links. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to reach out to me for a report, code, or discussion.